Lecture 18 covers section 6.1. At the end of today's lecture, you should be able to apply the Clausius inequality to quantify the amount of irreversibilities within a system. First to begin, the Clausius inequality is mathematically stated as a cyclic integral of delta q per t evaluated at our boundary has to be less than or equal to zero. The integral symbol with a circle represents our cyclic integral that we've introduced when we talked about work. The term delta q represents the heat transfer at a part of our system boundary during part of our cycle. T is the absolute temperature of the location on the boundary, B, at which our heat is transferred. And the cyclic integral of heat transfer is expressed as qh minus ql. This has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now let's consider an irreversible cycle. That is an irreversible Rankine cycle. The Rankine cycle is a backbone of power generation. We have fluid entering our pump at state one, where it increases in pressure before it enters our boiler at state two. Through an isobaric heat addition process, we have fluid, hopefully steam, exiting at state three, that enters our turbine is an expanded that produces work. The fluid is then rejected to a condenser where it undergoes another isobaric process to decrease the quality of our fluid before entering the pump. Now, for this particular Rankine cycle, we're going to assume the inlet of our boiler is saturated liquid at 700 kPa. The outlet of our boiler is saturated vapor, also at 700 kPa. The output of the turbine is a fluid with a quality of 90% and a pressure of 15 kPa. And the outlet of our condenser is a fluid with a quality of 10% and also a pressure of 15 kPa. Now, the heat into the boiler on a per mass basis, Q going from state two to state three, is simply your difference of enthalpies, H3 less H2, which is 2,066.3 kilojoule per kg. And this heat is added at our saturation temperature of 164.97 degrees centigrade. We will consider this our boundary temperature. A condenser, also a constant pressure process, is going to take our fluid from a high quality to low quality. That is, our heat rejected going from state four to state one is H1 less H4, which is equal to minus 1,898.4 kilojoule per kg. And this is occurring at our saturation temperature of 53.97 degrees centigrade. Now, if we evaluate our cyclic integral delta Q per T, which is the sum of our heat transfer processes at the respective boundary conditions, we'd have this being equal to integral from state two to state three of delta Q per T evaluated at our hot side temperature, plus the integral from state four to state one of delta Q per T evaluated at our low side temperature. Since our boundary temperatures are constant, i.e. we are assuming our boundary temperatures are occurring at our saturation temperatures, these can come outside our integral. Therefore, the cyclic integral of delta Q per T is one per TH, the integral from state two to state three, a delta QH, plus one per TL, the integral from state four to state one, a delta QL. Or on a per mass basis, the cyclic integral of delta Q per T is equal to our heat supplied going from state two to state three per TH, plus our heat rejected going from state four to state one per TL. Now, if we substitute in our values, noting that our temperatures have to be expressed in Kelvin, we'd have our cyclic integral of delta Q per T would be 2,066.3 kilojoules, which was our heat supplied on a per mass basis per our assumed boundary temperature, i.e. our saturation temperature, which was 438.12 Kelvin, less 1,898.4 kilojoule per kg. This was the heat rejected through our condenser per our boundary temperature, which we are assuming is to be our saturation temperature taken in Kelvin of 337.12 Kelvin. Or we have a quantity 4.716 minus 5.083 or minus 1.807 kilojoule per kg K. Note this value. Once we cover lecture 19 and talk about the change of entropy for processes and cycles, we can calculate the total change of entropy for this irreversible Rankine cycle. And this number will reappear. We conclude that for an irreversible cycle, the heat rejected per boundary temperature will be greater than the heat accepted per boundary temperature. That is to say, for an irreversible cycle, the cyclic integral of delta Q per T evaluated at our respective boundary temperatures, B, is going to be less than zero. That is, as our irreversibilities increase towards infinity, our work, which is expressed as QH minus QL, is going to tend towards zero, which means QH will tend to QL, which means the cyclic integral of delta Q is going to equal zero. Since TL is always going to be less than TH, 
our cyclic integral of delta q per t becomes more negative as our irreversibilities increase. Increasing the negativity of the cyclic integral of delta q per t indicates greater irreversibilities are present within our system. Now, we have to consider a situation where the cyclic integral of delta q per t becomes less negative. And to do that, we are going to visit the Carnot cycle, which is a reversible heat engine. And note for the Carnot cycle, we have two heat transfer processes, an isothermal heat addition process going from state one to state two, and an isothermal heat rejection process going from state three to state four. Now the cyclic integral of our heat transfer is expressed as QH minus QL. This has to be greater than zero. That is, as irreversibilities within our system approach zero, our work value is going to approach a maximum value, which means QH must always be greater than QL. Therefore, the Clausius inequality would be expressed as the cyclic integral of delta Q per T evaluated at the respective boundary temperatures would be equal to the integral of delta Q per T evaluated at our hot side temperature minus the integral of delta Q per T evaluated at our low side temperature. Since our boundary temperature is a constant, we'd have our cyclic integral being equal to one per TH times the integral of delta QH minus one per TL times the integral of delta QL, which is equal to QH per TH minus QL per TL. As TH approaches TL, the cyclic integral of our heat is going to approach zero. That is, the cyclic integral of heat per boundary temperature must also tend to zero. That is, for reversible cycles, we could say the cyclic integral of delta Q per T evaluated at our respective boundary conditions is going to be equal to zero. And this is going to form the foundation of our definition of entropy.